today I'm going to compare different shells and shell options when we're installing Git Bash. We'll be using Python, Git and the basic shell functions to test afterwards. I accepted the default options, two exceptions, symlinks, because that's what Linux uses. And I've turned off Git Credential Manager because I need to manage my credentials, whatever I choose here. And it's not hard to manage your own credentials. We have to think carefully whether we want the experimental support for pseudo consoles. It's said to contain known bugs. Whether those bugs are worse than the bugs it fixes remains to be seen. We'll just have a look at the existing bugs without adding their experimental pseudo console ones. After installing, I jump into git prompt.sh. Here it's in Vim because it looks nice, but we're powerless to save it because it's user account control protected. So meanwhile, I make the same edits in a elevated permission window using admin privileges on Notepad, and that's saved now. And what we did there, we got rid of identifying information from the prompt, like the username and the name of the machine, U and the H. All right, it starts in the root directory. We want to change that to the home directory. So to do that in Windows, we need to set the environment variable home. So we just set that here by typing env, clicking the environment variable option, clicking environment variables again, and add a new one. cd into the home directory and pwd to make sure it is the intended home directory. And now I foolishly use LL to a long list. Uh, let's have a go at cloning this public repo of mine. So I paste in the, the command to clone it. And you see that there's characters there, the 302 and the 226. I've neglected them here. What I've done right here is I've found the way to check, as it says, make sure I've got the right access. SSH minus T, git, github command. That's a common way of testing SSH, which is a prerequisite for cloning Git repos. So I haven't got any keys. So let's do something about that. Let's paste in this command. All right, the tool I use for generating key, as I was saying, was uh, SSH key gen, and here we've got an elliptic key. While I'm generating it, I accept the defaults because they're sensible. I just enter through it. I don't want a password. So after generating that key, I'm going to cut it out and get the public version and paste that into GitHub. I click my face, my drop down, I get settings from there. And then I want to click SSH and GPG keys. I've got a whole load of those, which I don't particularly want to share. It's an embarrassing amount. It's probably a bad practice. So I'll add one more, I'll give it a title. So I remember to delete it this time. This is a demo key. At SSH key, it wants me to confirm my password. I need to censor that. Confirm. I've got the command to test it. I'll run that again. Yes. Now I'll try and clone that repo with the same command, which looks fine. It is fine on the face of things. It's just those junk characters in there which you can't see because of this dodgy shell. So I've gone into my my public repo here on a browser that where I've not logged in and I can see that I don't have the Git option, they're just HTTPS and Git of CLI, whereas in my other window where I am logged in to a private repo, I get the Git clone option in the middle. You get used to how to translate between the two. So here I'm trying to access uh, HTTPS public repo and it's asked for my Username and password, I give it anything for the password. I don't like putting passwords into pop ups. And it's saying that password authentication was removed on August 2021. I list my SSH directory to prove that I have the keys and no config. So I've up arrowed and I've taken the HTTPS version and I'm just editing it to the SSH version. I did that wrong. <laughs> uh, as I say, Git shouldn't be a scheme. It should be a user. Uh, that's right. And so I've cloned it. That's the private repo now I've cloned using my private key because 
Get yeah, those, it's me, I've got the key. Uh, moving on to the public repo. I'll uh, clean that with HTTPS. No problem. Remove it. Try again. Changing that to a SSH version. Hit apps and com colon. That's the user at a server. SSH. It will work because there's no authentication. Anyone can clone a public repo. You can just download the zip file if you don't even have Git. I enter um, the test repo here, hoping to make some impactful Python. Okay, Python wants to take me to the Windows Store. So I paste the path to my Python in to prove I already have it. Add the name of the executable and close it with quotes because there's a space in there. And it's just hanging. Uh, I guess the right quick key is Control Z or Control D or Control C. It's not like you're going to put a task into the background like you would in proper Linux. And I try again getting a shell by adding the minus I option for interactive and that's worked. I can import URL lib. The up arrow doesn't work or not work as intended. It just moves the cursor and it's inserted a non-printable invalid character. It doesn't function like an up arrow, which just prints the shell unusable without an up arrow. That's the go-to shell command, isn't it? Up arrow is probably the most used single start of command. It's hard to quit. None of those shortcut keys work. I have to type quit with brackets. I can export this and I can put that in bash RC. So it runs at startup and I can just type Python I to get into an interactive shell again without having to remember all that path to type it as well. I'm not committing that to the shell just yet. Let's try a, a new shell without anything exported. There's an aliasing method as well of getting Python to run convincingly in the shell. So I've aliased um, Python to a prefixed full path Python, prefixed with winpty which is a tool specifically for getting Windows command shell programs like this, Python, a command shell compiled for Windows to work in a Linux POSIX-like environment. That's a very convoluted way of saying it makes Python work with Bash for Windows. Uh, it should do anyway. I continue the pattern of aliasing, so Python 3 is available, is, is commonly used by me to distinguish my Python 2 from Python 3, but not by everyone, which is why I need Python alias as well. I open Vim with bash rc as the subject, and I can paste in the commands I want to keep. This will run on startup. It won't run by just typing bash. See, Python takes me to Windows Store still. So I start a new shell and it warns me that bash RC was found, but bash profile and bash login weren't. So it added those for me. Yeah, that's a nasty red warning, but it just had to do a bit of extra work, which you get provided with a real Linux. Python still isn't working. Why is that? Do you see the problem here? It's we've got alias Python equals Python. It's a circular reference, so we've not we're not going to get Python to work like that. Okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the fully qualified version. It works well in Control Z. Let's us out of there again. I'll make the update to Bash RC. But I don't restart bash yet, and I've continued much later on in the shell. I've skipped ahead. Commands to implement the fix inline, alias Python equals Python 3, which Python tested Python in the shell. Yep, control Z backed out, pip list, pip isn't found, but Python minus M pip list works. So I'm able to invoke modules and I'll set up a virtual environment. So the core tool for Linux Python developers, the virtual environment. We can't have Docker, we can have virtual environments and they're much simpler. All right, let's activate that. Yeah, let's work. 
Let me see the basic packages provided. Now can we install something? Yeah, we installed requests. Now can we access it from the Python shell? Oh, we can't access it. Why not? Import CS, CS path. Ah, that's interesting. You can see the path is just system wide path. There's nothing in the directory which this virtual environment should add to that path. So that's totally ignoring the virtual environments packages. I'll deactivate that. Start a new terminal. Have a look at bash, I'll see. Maybe this fresh shell will make it work. Import CS, CS path. It's just site packages. And nothing for this user or even this virtual environment. Maybe instead of using VM, we need to be using virtual and, but who does that nowadays? So I'll start a new shell and I export the path where Python will be found. And it is found, Python and pip list. I can load modules with it, even if pip isn't available on the path. Create a new virtual environment, call it VN or export with export. Let's run the same test. So I pip list from the virtual environment. It knows what pip is. It's found it. Go into the Python shell after installing requests. I had to escape back out, use the minus i flag. Could use WinPTY, but then it wouldn't be much different to what we've done before. Maybe it isn't WinPTY, maybe it's using the alias that was causing that to happen. All right, so it's working with Python minus i. We can use requests. All right, we've got some corruption in the console going on here. Non-printable characters. So I get out of that by typing quit. All right, WinPTY Python. Let's try it. All right, it works, but I'm not in the virtual environment. And I can import requests. Yes, when PTY is good. So the problem is the alias. It's a good thing we've got an alternative for that export path. Although adding to path isn't always ideal, it is in this case. Windows command prompt. Export path. It hasn't picked the path up, so I'll just whack Python on the end of the path and execute it directly. Using up arrow. Up arrow works. Nice. Delete. Left arrow works. Activate the previous virtual environment. Check it's still got request installed. It does. Get a prompt into it. I'll import requests. That's worked. Get greedy and try and get tab for autocomplete. This is not going to work. Right, let's paste that request get in. So some pasting works. Just not in git bash very much. Muck around with this in the up arrow. See if I can get any dud characters. So I use left arrow, up arrow, all sorts. Nope, still working. Let me get out of there. Control Z and enter. And the command prompts. Let's activate that virtual environment again. Pip list. Request is installed. If then import requests. This terminal isn't going to show us anything new from command prompt. The terminal doesn't give us tab completion. It's all cosmetics. 
PowerShell fresh installation and it doesn't want to allow me to execute my script, what I have to do is set execution policy remote signed, which means that only remote scripts need signing. And I'll do this in the elevated permission window, which I've shown you here in blue. Uh, found PowerShell in the Windows menu, right clicked it, run as admin, pasted that command in, okayed it. So that should make all the difference to activating our virtual environment. And it's activated. I type Python, and we get into it. Pip list shows we've got requests installed. Python 3, there's nothing there. Right, it works. No autocomplete. The arrows are all good. Well, at least the up arrow. I can see exactly what options I gave the installer in this file. This file named install options.txt. Here we have disabled pseudo console support and use credential manager also disabled having this file is really handy so i can experiment without having to remember what options i'd selected when installing especially if i've done it multiple times they tend to all merge together so if someone asks you did you enable ssh support or credential manager you've got the definitive answer here in this file no lfs in this one but we do have that in another file etc Git config, yeah, those are all Git options. And I recognize all but two of them. There's core and HTTP, seem to be Git for Windows specific keys. The keys are in square brackets. Let's delete everything here and try again. Oh, when I say delete everything here, I've actually uninstalled Git properly, like a savage. I'll install Git again quickly. And this time I'm using Git Credential Manager and the sudo console support. Here we are back in Git Bash. I export Python so it knows where to find the program we're talking all about. Oh, rather than taking us to the Windows Store, Python on its own launches a shell, a replica shell, which we get out of immediately with control there. All right, the next test is pip. We can load modules. Let's keep checking for those errors, uh, known bugs as they call them. Create a new virtual environment. I speed this up because it takes a long time. All right, fresh virtual environment. Let's install requests. This is working. Great. We didn't have the suffix and we didn't have the prefix. Pseudo console support is useful.